I'm River Bay, and welcome to my gun kingdom. I'm always excited about doing videos uh, with the 444, and you know I, I think it's a it's just a really great gun to hunt deer with, and I've had a lot of success with it over the years. And uh, you know I've done so many videos here on my channel uh, with the 444, and the latest one that I did was. Um, demonstrating the drop it has at uh, 300 yards. And if you haven't seen that, make sure you find that here on my channel. And I'll throw a link at the end of this video where you can watch it at. But I actually hit the bullseye at 300 yards uh, just one time. Um, but at least I hit it and I demonstrated the drop that it has. But, um, you know, today, um, it's a, this is another important video with the 444. And I think you're gonna find find it interesting, but I had on a scope that um, well, that needed replaced, updated, and I had a few, quite a few viewers write in and say sh that I should replace it. So I took this one off. And this is a Tasco, and you know, it's a three by nine. And you know, back in the day, you know, it, it's probably a good, um, uh, good scope. Well, in fact, I did hit the bullseye at 300 yards with it, so it, it is pretty, pretty decent scope. But I just wanted to go with the Leopold, and uh, now I put this Tasco, the old one, in here. But anyway, this is the the box the new one came in. So I have a Leopold 3x9 scope that I mounted on it. Now the only problem is um, I haven't had it bore sighted, so. I'm going to have to uh, just dial it in first at 25 yards. But there's a couple things I want to talk to you about today, um, about the 444. Um, it's your best cartridge for deer, um, especially if you live in a state that requires straight wall cartridges. So um, it's your best choice out there. And I've had people write to me and say, well, we can't find the ammunition for the 444. Well, you know, these guns aren't plinking guns, so what I recommend is stocking up on a couple boxes. And, and at the time this video is being made, a box of uh, 20, um, 444 is going to cost you around 55, 60 bucks. Now, the gun store that I go to, um, about five minutes from this gun range, um, they always have 444 available. So, write to me in the comments section and let me know if you're having troubles finding it and I'll help you locate it. Um, but usually you can find it on the internet so easy and uh, you know you, you, you had to pay a little shipping uh, fee uh, to get it delivered to you unless you order in bulk. Um, but anyway, um, there's, there's a couple things I want to talk to you about uh, being a better marksman with, with any rifle. Um, but the ammunition that I always recommend and, and that is Hordendy if you can get it. And here I have uh, a box of Lever Revolution Hordendy 444 and these are the FTX 265 grain. Now these cartridges have the flex tip and that's what the FTX is all about. Now these polymer tips here make it safe to load in a lever action gun. And now I'm going to tell you something kind of interesting about Hordendy. And they did something that other ammo companies refused to do. And they took the best cartridges for hunting deer. And, and, and we all know that deer have always been thin-skinned animals. And they're going to remain thin-skinned animals. So while other ammo companies are out there chasing rainbows, trying to invent a better cartridge to knock down a deer. Hordendy says, well, let's take, let's take the ones, let's take the cartridges that are proven, tested, and, and loved by everybody out there. You know, like for instance, if you live in a state that allows bo bottleneck cartridges, you got the 3030. Okay, no better deer rifle than the 3030. 
if you live in a state that allows it. But if you live in a state like me that only allows straight wall cartridges, well, then you have to go to the 444, which isn't, you know, a bad choice. It's the best choice. Even if you live in a state that allows bottleneck cartridges, you could use a 444. But those are your two best cartridges for hunting deer. Now, Hordendy said, that's, that's true. They are the best cartridges, so let's make them better. That's what Hordendy said. Let's make those two cartridges better. Let's make them more aerodynamic. Let's make them safe to load in a lever action gun. And that improves the BC on these cartridges to where they shoot flat and fast. And also with the 444, you really have an advantage with this because when it hits a deer, it sends a shock wave that goes throughout the whole body of the deer. And that pretty much cripples the central nervous system in a deer and takes them right down. I've never had a deer go more than five feet after being hit with a 444. And it all depends on, on bullet placement. And, you know, you don't have to be that accurate. You know, we're, we're shooting at bullseyes today um, with, with these cartridges. But, you know, when you're hunting a deer, it's an eight inch diameter bullseye that you gotta hit, that's it. Okay, so anywhere within that eight inches. Okay, so either on the shoulder or just slightly behind the shoulder uh, is where you wanna hit them. Now, so we know about the ammunition. And then also when we sight in our rifles, and I, like I said earlier before, these aren't plinking guns, okay? So once we sight in our rifle close to deer season, we're all set to go. We don't need to go out and target practice with it anymore unless you want to shoot a box of 20 again and, and uh, maybe get used to the recoil or whatever. But sight it in, leave it there, and buy a couple box of these things and you're ready to go deer hunting that season. All right, the next thing we want to go over is um, how to get off a better shot and that's by squeezing the trigger. And it should surprise you. you. You should squeeze the trigger ever so slightly to where it just surprises you when it goes off. And once it, once it goes off, it's already there. Okay, so even if you flinch after you fire the shot, that shot is already there. That's how fast these bullets are. Okay, so, but the main thing to do I like to tell people to start out with or practice all year round with is a 22 long rifle or a 22 magnum and practice when you when you shoot those rifles practice squeezing the trigger because they have no recoil and try to keep your your eyes open when you're when you're squeezing off that trigger now if you're looking through a scope you're you know like me I grew up closing the left eye I'm, I'm right-handed so I shoot um, I shoot with my dominant eye the right eye so if I'm looking through a scope, I would always close that left eye. Some people leave it open, but I prefer to close it. Now, also on this rifle here, and by the way, this is a Marlin 444, and it has a 24 inch barrel and JM stamped, um, so it doesn't have a, um, a cross bolt safety on it. And that's the, way, that's the way I like this rifle to be, because this is a hunting rifle. Okay, so you notice, and I've had people comment on these rings that some people don't like them, but these are sight through rings. And if your scope would ever fail for whatever reason, you got, it's, it's misty outside or your deer is so close within range, you don't even need a scope. You can go down to this down here and use your iron sights again. Then I would leave both eyes open if I was shooting through the iron sights, okay? Or you can close them, whatever you want to do. But this, these rings give me that option, and that's what I like about it. I know they're not pretty. They don't look great, you know, and even a scope doesn't look that great on a lever action gun. But when you get older and your eye star eyesight starts to fail, um, then you're gonna have to go to a scope. But if they're within close range, you know, say 25 yards or less, I don't need, I don't need a scope. So that's why I like these rings. So those are the two things you just have to remember. Always zero your rifle in with the ammunition you're gonna hunt with because it makes a big difference. Okay, and all these cartridges in here are not created equal. 
Some have a little bit more gunpowder than others, and if you've watched my other videos, you'll notice that. And with a lead sled here, we're pretty accurate, and we don't get a lot of movement uh, with a lead sled too. So it, these are expensive to shoot, $55 a box at the time this video is being made. So it's something that you really want to use a lead sled for. I, you know, I don't like, um, you can use a, a sandbag or a rice bag or whatever you want to use, but you're not going to get that steadiness that you need that, that comes from a lead sled. And also I put a baggish 25 pound shot in the lead sled and that holds it really tight for me. All right, so, um, and also you notice I lay a towel underneath and that way I can slide the lead sled around a little bit easier because it does have rubber feet. I always kind of go back and forth with the towel. Um, you know, sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't, but uh, uh, I find that it's better to, it's, it's easier to get it on target with, with a towel um, than without since it has the rubber feet. Okay, so let's go ahead and start at 25 yards. Um, like I said, this the scope that I put on here, I put on myself and I don't have a bore sighter. So, um, and that's really important to start at a closer range because this ammunition um, from Hordendy is um, expensive, but you get what you pay for. Uh, this is the best for hunting. Uh, so we got the 265 grain FTX uh, polymer tips, uh, which are safe to load in the lever action gun. So pretty excited about using this scope. I've been wanting to upgrade my scope here. Uh, this is good. Leopold has such nice glass. And we're gonna start with nine power, of course, okay? And we're gonna start with that lower target here. And I'm gonna put the crosshairs right right in the center of of the target okay okay so we got five in here all right all righty these horn be load nice too okay so now Squeezing the trigger is real important to being a good marksman, whether you're target shooting or whether you're hunting. And squeezing the trigger is going to make or break you on, on placement of that bolt. Okay, so the best thing I can suggest that you do is take a 22 long rifle or a 22 magnum and do some plinking and practice squeezing that trigger off because you don't have a recoil of a 22 and that way it's you're going to be able to practice keeping your eye open squeeze the trigger ever so slightly to where it surprises you when it goes off all right that's going to make you a better shot all right and all right let's get it on paper see how close i am here Pretty close. One more and we'll move the target to 50 yards if we're still close like this. Nice group of two right there. Perfect. All right. Well, these shells are pretty expensive. You might be wondering how much a box of 20 costs. Well, at the time this video is being made, this box of 20, 444, 265 grain FTX polymer tips cost around $55. All right. So, so that's why once we got it, close like we do that right now um, let's put the safety flag in it okay the safety flag is in it. now we'll go out and we'll move the target to 50 yards okay and then after that we'll go right to a hundred yard range all right so 
I just moved the target to 50 yards and you might think well I'm pretty much almost dead on at 25 why not just go right up to 100 the only reason I do it I mean if if this was a plinking cartridge like a 22 shoot you can buy a box of uh, federal uh, bulk uh, ammo 22 long rifle I think you can get it for like you get like 350 rounds for like I don't know around 20 bucks but this, this stuff's real expensive so I want to make sure before I zero the rifle in at 100 yards because that's where that's where you want the 444 to be zeroed in at is about 100 yards it has the capability of reaching out to 200 yards uh, with a reference point still on the deer uh, to where you can get a good bullet placement but um, I mean you really you could go out you know go out to 250 yards with a 444 but then you don't have the reference point um, how high you have to be for that bullet drop so you know 200 would probably be your max but 150 is perfect and eventually you know that's why you want to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell notification bell because I'll eventually be doing the video to where we shoot at 150 yards uh, but once we get it zeroed in at 100 yards I'll leave it there and also I always zero my rifle in with the ammunition I'm going to hunt with so if you think well I might, might might not be able to find this ammo in the store come hunting season well you know stock up on it bef way before maybe a year before uh, buy, buy several boxes uh, zero your rifle in with with one box leave it there and then just before deer deer season starts like a couple weeks before go out and shoot it again make sure it's still there at 100 yards so all right so let's stay at that bottom target all right here we go take the safety flag out okay keep your finger outside the trigger guard until you're ready to shoot practice squeezing the trigger this is the time to practice okay that one was high okay we're going to shoot okay well we know we're going to have a bullet rise right going out to 50 yards <clears throat> but that's that's what i like about starting at 25 to get it on paper still on that lower target I like this scope a lot it's nice clear glass not cloudy at all here we go There we go, that was closer. Let's see. So, since this ammo is really expensive, I'm just gonna shoot one more at 50 yards and we'll, we'll go up to the 100 yard range with it. Zero it in, leave it there. All right, so, um, but let's, uh, 
Let's take one more shot at 50 yards here. Squeezing that trigger. Staying with the bottom part. So I just set up the move the target down to 100 yards and once we sight it in here at 100 then we'll leave it there and then I'll do another video at 150. All right. All right. So we're going to go up to a new target. Let's shoot at the top target now. Okay, it has a little bit bigger bullseye. All right. Okay. Let's get it close anyway before we load. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can get away with, uh, since these are so expensive, let's see if we can get away with just loading three of them. Then that way we still have some left for, uh, for the next video at 150 yards. Now, here on my channel, I've got um, I've got a video that's pretty popular. It's uh, shooting the 444 Marlin at 200 yards, so it's not a long video either. So it's pretty pretty young. <clears throat> if you want to watch that, all right, but we'll definitely come back and shoot at 150 though. All right, so let's go ahead and load three. Okay, again we're using the Hordendy 265 grain uh, and uh, these are with the polymer tip, the FTX Leather Revolution. Okay, so this is what I'm going to hunt with. So, all right, so we're at 100 yards. Okay, there we're close again. All right, here we go. Pretty good shot. Not bad. Okay, if that was a deer, he'd be dead, right? Because um, a bullseye on a deer is eight inch diameter. Okay, so that's just touching the bullseye. Now, you think to yourself, wow, do we go ahead and mess with the... Let's take one more before we we mess with any of the adjustments, okay? So, make sure we don't leave, lose these caps. Here we go. Oh, I was high and to the left a little bit. That could have been me. Or it could have just been a shell with more power powder to it. We don't know. All right, so let's try another one. Let's not mess with it yet. Okay, now I was low. Yeah, see, that's why. That's why I'm glad I didn't make any adjustments there. So that was three. So, do you say you're good? Yeah, I'd like to have them 
a little bit closer uh, than what we got them. Let's put in another three anyway. All right. All right, let's see if we're close here. Oh yeah, we're really close. Let's go ahead and load one in there. Fingers outside the trigger guard, okay. Here we go. I was way over to the left that time. Right. Try another one. Looks like I'm touching the, one of those other ones. Well, we know, let me check in here, make sure first before I, there's a couple of them there that's telling me I shouldn't mess with the elevation right now. But there is one, or all of them actually are telling me that I need to come over to the right, okay? And let's start out with just two clicks over. Again, the elevation looks good. Um, that's why I'm not going to mess with that. All right, so. Here we go. Well, it did not move it over to the right. But we don't want to go crazy. Let's make sure in the spotting scope, but I don't see it. With the scope on the gun, but let's just make sure. I think what I should do, I've got them little stickers I can put on there. Let me run out there real quick and put those on there before we take any more shots. Okay, so when you're shooting um, with a 444, they're so expensive, so I like to see how they're like touching and probably one went right through there. But we want to make sure, since we're zeroing in at 100 yards, that's why I just go ahead and just cover these up here. And these cost next to nothing here. There we go. Okay, let's try that. Uh, check your lead, lead sled too, because uh, these big bore rifles, they kind of loosen things up and everything. All right, so it's like having a fresh target. So we're empty right now, so let's get in, uh, let's get in some more shells here. And what do we got? We got only three left and that's it. All right, all right. Here we go. Okay, we're close. Okay, keep the finger out of the trigger guard until you're ready to shoot. For a woods gun, I would think it would have at least a four pound trigger, maybe a five pound trigger, but it seems really light. Okay, here we go. Oh. 
right in the bullseye. See, that's why I didn't want to mess with the... That's why I didn't want to mess with the uh, elevation. That's just one in the bullseye. Let's fire. We only got two left anyway. Let's finish them off. All right. Bring that back as far as I can. I want it into my shoulder. Okay. Even though it's in a lead sled, make sure it's tight against your shoulder. All right. Here we go. That's kind of where it was shooting before we moved it over to the right, remember. But I hate to mess with it. We got one more. You know, that's where you have to make a decision. Should you move it over? Because um, that's kind of where it was shooting before, but we've already moved it, and I had one good placement in the bullseye. You don't want to move your crosshairs over, remember, okay? You want to try to... Because when you're zero, zeroing your rifle in, you want to stay where you're always aiming at. Here we go. That shot a little bit lower. That could just be me. Um, but... You know, you can see the 8-inch diameter on that target. So we are out of ammo. So what do you do? Do you come back to the hunter? Absolutely. Because I just don't like the grouping that I'm getting right now. Okay, they're all within 8-inch, that 8-inch circle. They're pretty doggone close. But I'd like to have them at least uh, almost touching anyway. So I'm not done at the 100 yard range sighting it in. But it's pretty close. We started at 25, moved to 50, and then 100. So <clears throat> I'd hope I could probably do this with another five shots. But anyway, I appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. The like button too helps me out. Share it with your friends. Um, and uh, this is the 444. So thanks again for watching.